pasta alla matriciana. It's basically the carbonara without the egg, but with tomato sauce and white wine. Can people do it? Can people make this pasta? Let's see. This video has been brought to you by Squarespace. Use the Vincenzo's Plate code to get 10% off on your first website. Hi and welcome to Vincenzo's Plate, the place where you get to learn how to cook beautiful Italian food in your own kitchen. Today we're reacting to Pasta La Matriciana, two famous channels lots of videos lots of people have watched these two videos did they do it right pasta la matriciana it's popular but not as popular as, as carbonara pasta la matriciana is a pasta from rome like carbonara and basically it's a bit easier much easier than carbonara you can't really make mistakes with a matriciana you know you use four ingredients how can you go wrong so can these guys make a matriciana like a roman Let's see. Anyway, I have a video on my YouTube channel how to make pasta alla matriciana, bucatini alla matriciana the right way. Make sure you watch it. The first video we are reacting to is a video by Dono. He's great, he's very passionate about cooking. He made some mistakes in the past with Italian recipes. Let's see how it goes right now. So let's watch this video together. One of the first ever Italian classic pasta recipes I learned to make was pasta amatriciana. I understand you can't pronounce it. It's amatriciana. I know it can be difficult, you can say amatriciana, but amatriciana, if you want to learn how to say it. Amatrice is a town that doesn't exist anymore. The earthquake a few years ago destroyed an entire town called Amatrice. So that's where the actual Amatriciana pasta come from, from the town of Amatrice. Rome took the credit as a Roman pasta, but actually this pasta is originally from a town that unfortunately disappeared because of a headquake. Like many great Italian recipes, it only takes a handful of ingredients. Extra virgin olive oil, pecorino, beautiful tomatoes, bucatini, which is classic, and of course some white wine, some pancetta or guanciale, garlic and some chili flakes. That is it. That's it. Very easy. So if people can do pasta matriciana, why you can't do carbonara? It's the same thing the most you're going to have in your store cupboard already. Now this starts off by making this wonderful sauce. It begins in a pan with some extra virgin olive oil, about a tablespoon going in here. I have to go a bit generous on this. And to that, I'm going to flavor up the oil with a clove of garlic. So that's going to come up to temperature. And once it starts to sizzle, we've got garlic flavored oil. Okay. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Why not? I mean, People think Italian food always needs garlic. So yeah, I mean, adding garlic gives more flavor to your oil. That's nice, there's nothing wrong with that. But you know, the guanciale, the pancetta already have lots of flavors. You don't really need to add the garlic because when you cook the guanciale or the pancetta, it, it actually creates the oil, you know, from the fat. And the fat is full of flavors, you know? Actually, that fat has beautiful flavors, so you don't need the garlic. Okay, it's done its duty. Thank you, garlic. If I could just get you out of the pan. Okay, I'm gonna just leave that aside. It is done. <laughs> it's funny when the food plays with you. I love it. It's so much fun. It happens all the time. It's brilliant. It's added the flavor. And now we need to get into that oil some of this pancetta. Now, pancetta is something that is commonly available. Whereas the classic ingredient here is guanciale, which is pork jowl, and it's cured, it's spiced. It's a wonderful ingredient if you can get your hands on it. But if you can only get pancetta, your amatriciana will still be delicious. Okay, the pancetta is great, or guanciale. Now, as you can see, he cooked his pancetta. He's cooking the pancetta way too fast. He's stressing out the meat. You know, you need to cook as low as a low heat, so you get the tender inside, moist inside and crunch on the outside. If you cook a steak too fast, the steak won't taste nice. You know, you wanna cook your steak gently, relaxing. It only takes 10 minutes to make this, to cook the pancetta. So just wait a couple of more minutes. Give it a good stir through. And then once that is sizzling and good to go, it's time to get in there with the white wine. Okay, so he used the chili, which is fine. We can use chili, not, nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's more of, 
you know, it's, it's a personal choice to use chili. Ah, oh, the minute you add that white wine, you're deglazing the pan. All those fatty juices are being cut with the acidity of the wine, and we're in business. So while that just sizzles down ever so slightly, I can tell how much he loves making this pasta. He really lo loves making this pasta. It looks beautiful. I can smell this pasta from my laptop. I'm going to hand crush these plum tomatoes and make sure that they're nice and smooth. It's quite a satisfying job when you're making your amatriciana. It's the sort of thing that you feel like you've you've worked you've worked hard to get these results wow 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 Donald well done crushing the hand it's like when you make pizza you always crush the peeled tomatoes with your hands it is beautiful to crush it with your hands you don't see this stuff in these days I can really tell this guy loves is a matriciana he really loves it because you know you can use a fork anything and he's using his hands he really really loves this pasta that is lovely crushed tomatoes in a bowl being added into this sauce and look for the sizzle oh yeah it's a sexy little sizzle going on here very sexy very sexy just get all those tomatoes into that pan with the white wine the pancetta what you need to understand is that you need to make sure the white wine evaporates okay it's something you didn't say so the wine gives a flavor to the meat but you don't want to uh, mix the wine and the tomatoes okay you don't want that so you want the meat to get the flavor of the wine wine evaporates and then you add the tomato sauce and by the way it's kids friendly because the wine once evaporates there is no alcohol in there okay so the pasta that you use for amatriciana is very important look out for this bucatini which is these fantastic kind of spaghetti like strands but they're kind of thicker than spaghetti and they have this tiny little hole in the center this goes into cook it's going to cook for about i would say about 10 minutes i love this first. pasta so much yeah the bucatini i don't like bucatini as a pasta but when i make a matriciana i always use bucatini it's the perfect pasta for a matriciana in fact this dish is not called pasta alla matriciana it's called bucatini alla matriciana because in rome they always serve it with a uh, bucatini you get the sauce going inside the hole and the pasta is delicious make sure please 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 that your pasta water is heavily salted i've already salted this but i want to add a tiny touch more it does make a difference to your pasta this is going to cook this sauce is going to cook i'm going to give it a little bit of attention along the way and then we'll be good to serve i mean i've seen a few videos of this guy where you he made some mistakes with the pastas let's not comment that but he is really doing a good job on this well done i don't, I don't have much to say Right, this pasta should be nice and al dente right about now. And the best way of checking that is to not throw it against the wall. Don't do that, because you'll just end up with a mess in the kitchen. Is to basically take it out one strand at a time. Mm. Fantastic. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Don't put it on the wall, please. No, just taste the pasta. That's the only way to do it. You taste it. Perfectly al dente. And this sauce just needs a touch of salt just to bring it together. He's adding salt, which is fine. It's fine. I would recommend not too much salt because the pecorino has a lot of salt. The pancetta o guanciale have a lot of salt. So just be careful, guys, with the salt, okay? Don't go crazy. So pasta goes in, and then it's just a case of getting in there and giving it all a good stir up with a tiny touch of pecorino cheese. Pecorino has that lovely sort of creamy... Guys, what I recommend you with the pecorino, when you grate your pecorino, uh, maybe try to avoid, you know, to make those long strings, you know? Uh, you're not making pizza, you know? So just grate your pecorino very thin, you know? Like small, thin, grated, and that will combine better with your pasta. And I think it will also give more flavor to your pasta because when you get this long, uh, strips of pecorino yes it is nice but it's not going to be absorbed by the sauce and the pasta the way it should be and a hot steaming plate of tomato amatriciana pasta beautiful oh, beautiful beautiful Donald did a very good job well done very very good job easy done in no time but if you guys can make this why you can't make carbonara it's the same thing. You just need to use eggs instead of wine and tomatoes. Easy. Now, I quickly also want to react to Mario Batali. He's very famous in the US and he makes Bucatina La Matriciana. I believe his family is Roman. He's got a restaurant. Uh, Bucatina Matriciana can't go wrong. You know, it's very simple ingredients. Um, but he starts his video 
with onion, Spanish onion, which is normally what you use in salads. You don't put onions in the Bucatina La Matriciana. Let's see what it does. Okay, so basically you're not meant to cook the guanciale, the pig chico pancetta with the oil, pardo to add the oil, extra virgin olive oil, but you're not meant to because the guanciale pancetta have a lot of fat and the fat turns into oil, okay? Uh, what he's doing here is also using Spanish onion, which we don't really use in Italy in La Matriciana. Actually, we don't cook uh, with Spanish onion, you know, we more use it in salads, you know? Anyway, what he's doing, he's got big chunks of onion and what he should have done, he should have cooked the onion a little bit earlier than the guanciale because the guanciale cooks faster than the onion. The onion needs at least 10 minutes to caramelize, especially if the chunks are this big. So, why you put them together? Mm. Yeah, we cook the pasta. Beautiful, the guanciale is basically pretty much cooked as you can see when instead the onion is cooked on one side but not on the other side. The guanciale will be done in one minute or so. The only thing is I want to make sure that you don't burn your guanciale. The guanciale needs to be cooked low, 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 not fast, okay? A matriciana requires nice, beautiful, peeled tomatoes or fresh tomatoes. He is using a tomato paste. Okay, I'm sure it's gonna taste good. You don't need a tomato paste. You just need to use a beautiful fresh and crushed tomato like um, Donald did before. Peeled tomato is beautiful. I've got a video on my channel where I show you how to make the perfect Bucatina and Matriciana. And trust me, you don't need to buy all these ingredients. There are a few ingredients. Chili and then he's also adding basil from what I can see. You don't need basil right now because you put the basil at the end to give the flavor if you want to use basil. Chili, yes, um, you can add chili. Uh, but I noticed that, you know, these people, these chefs always try to add more and more and more. The why, you know, just add more guanciale if you want to add more. You don't have enough guanciale and this, you cut the guanciale like a steak, it's so big. Okay, I'm glad he's using uh, the tomato. Looks like it's peeled tomato. You can see the seeds in there. So that's good. Now, what the pasta water is doing, which is very important, and Donald didn't use it before. What the pasta water is doing is it's gonna help to combine your ingredients, like the pasta with the sauce, because the pasta water has starch in there and the starch is gonna help you to create that creaminess effect. See, this is the time when I'm going to add the basil, if I have to use the basil. I don't use basil in my amatriciana. Beautiful, re re looks fantastic. Um, see how red the pasta is? It's so red, in a way it looks a little bit artificial. And the reason why it's so red is because of the paste. The tomato paste did gave the color to this pasta, okay? I don't want my amatriciana to be this red. There's nothing wrong with this resin. It's actually beautiful, it's delicious. But again, I like my classic amatriciana the way it is. And don't tell me that our food is basic and boring because it's not boring, okay? This is fine, this is nice, but why do you always need to try and add more when you can have beautiful flavors with less? Another thing I wanna, I wanna say to you, see that basil there? That basil has been chopped with a knife. I recommend you strongly not to do that because when you're chopping the basil on the chopping board, you actually leaving the flavors on the chopping board. Basil strictly must be ripped by hand and pulled straight in the sauce because the 
the flavors will stay a little bit on your hands and go mostly in, in the sauce. If you do it on the chopping board, the chopping board will get all the flavors. You don't want that. See that pecorino over there? You want the pecorino to be grated this way, fine, because it will combine perfectly with the pasta, okay? What Donald used before was okay, but if you really wanna take your pasta to the next level with simple ingredients, this is what you need to do, you know? Every single detail is important. Very smart to use a black plate. Very, very smart. You get all the colors out. It looks fantastic. I have to say to you, it does look fantastic. There's nothing wrong to say. It really, really, really looks fantastic. That's how Mario Batali makes his Bucatina La Matriciana. Um, I don't believe the onion is important. You don't need the onion. I will definitely remove the onion. And I'm, I will remove the tomato paste too because I want the flavors of a beautiful fresh uh, peeled tomatoes. But oh, again, there's nothing wrong with this recipe. It's uh, my personal choice not, not to use these ingredients, but it looks great. If he serves this to me, I can en surely enjoy and I can give him a five-star review for this. It's really done right. It's really beautiful, so there's nothing to say. I'm very happy with these two videos. These guys have done a great job, but I invite you to watch my video, please, on my YouTube channel, how to make Bucatina La Matriciana, like a Roman. Simple ingredients, top flavors. My website really changed my life, and Squarespace can create a website for you and change your life too. This year was a very difficult year because of COVID. We did learn so much. And one thing that you learn is that you only live once. So share your passion, do what you love. And by creating your own blog, website, it can be about cars, about travel, food. And I promise I'm not going to react to your food blog. <laughs> but by creating a website, a your website, you can really be happier. Squarespace can give you 10 template options. You can choose your template. It can be your food blog. You can add photos into your template. You can actually edit the photos on your template. You can look at the analytics. You can add videos into it. You can create an email list on Squarespace so you can connect with your fans. You can create your own community thanks to Squarespace. So basically, every single day, you get to talk to your beautiful fans, your community, and trust me guys, there is nothing that makes me happier than talking to you every day. You make my day every single day, thanks to my website. So today, I'm giving you a 10% off to create your first website on Squarespace. Just use the Vincenzo's Play code and start your journey of happiness. Thank you so much for watching this video. We will see you in the next Vincenzo's Plate video reaction. E ora si mangia. Vincenzo's Plate. Thank you.